Welcome to Rotary and Serving Our Community. My name is Wade Nomura and today we have a pretty special program. We're going to be talking about one of the aspects of Rotary and that is leadership. With us today we have Jack Tingstrom. Jack, how you doing? Great, Wade. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> good, good. Now what is your role in Rotary? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, let's see. I can start by saying I'm a native Santa Barbara, born and raised here. In fact, I was born in a house over on Gillespie and Mitchell Terrain. I'm still <laughs> here. Um, was schooled here, graduated from Santa Barbara Catholic High School in 53, went into the Navy. And talking about leadership, uh, that started right then. I was a cryptographer. I was working for the Admiral Commander of Fleet Air Western Pacific and uh, running a watch section of, uh, of cryptographers. I came home, I went to work for General Telephone Company and worked my way into the managerial level of the, of the uh, organization. Uh, they sort of required community service. When you made a manager, you went into community service and that's where my, my life in Rotary began because I was joined Rotary in, uh, in Santa Paula in 1978 with Jack McClanahan. <laughs> and when I graduated on the same day we joined from there, uh, moved back to, uh, to Santa Barbara in my, my operating and, and became really involved in Rotary. Rotary to me is really special. My whole life has been service, service and in the service in the Navy and then service to the community and service to uh, GTE was a telephone service. And I loved community service. I was involved in, uh, in, in high school and I decided that that's where I wanted to go. And uh, from there, I got involved in the community in Santa Paula. Uh, when I got transferred back to Santa Barbara, I became involved in the community in Carpinteria because I was commuting, so Carpinteria was natural. I um, met some very nice people. I mean, they're just super people. I became a conference chair and I'm assembly chair, <laughs> uh, just various chairs, and uh, then took over giving, giving uh, uh, community service projects like vocational service and community service and international service and club service. Those are the types of things that I really like to do. I had, a, I had some great leaders. I worked for about 10 district governors in a row. So this is all based on rotary experience you're talking all about now. All rotary experience. Okay. Uh -huh. <clears throat> and my GTE experience, you know, that kept leadership leading this organization, leading this uh, part, of the, uh, part of, the, of the corporation. Then I went on from there. Uh, when I retired, and, uh, I went back to Ventura and got involved in politics. And from there, I became a city councilman and a mayor, a mayor of Ventura, and that's that another leadership role. And all of this before I got into Pearls, before Pearls was even uh, thought of. When Pearls came along and I was asked to get involved in that, I, I just jumped at the chance because I just had finished up my my MBA at the age of 65 in executive leadership and economics. And so it gave me a chance to expand on that. I, uh, with your help, and you asked me to, to come on board for Pearls, practical, relevant leadership skills. When it first started with Jock McKinsey, district governor, it was potential rotary leadership skills. And we had refined it because it, it didn't we weren't just looking for rotary leadership. We were looking for everybody in Rotary is a leader of some kind of another. They really are. And we're giving them practical leadership skills, something they can use in their family, something they can use in everyday life. And we have found that to, to be a, a pretty exciting situation. Um, rotary itself uh, lends itself to, to leadership. In other words, the people you actually recruit have to come from some type of leadership background or business background. Um, and using, I would say, Pearl's Practical Relevant Leadership Skills as one of the tools then, um, have you noticed that it increases and improves the leadership capabilities of not only clubs, but of communities and community leaders? Yeah, it does, uh, Wade. We start out with, uh, as you know, with the introduction to, uh, to Rotary and uh, leadership and communication skills. And it takes a half a day to do that. From that, that opens them up to, uh, to go to five, five sessions of leadership skills. And that's the exciting part because now you're getting into what leadership is all about. We start out by offering facilitation, how to take a project, how to put it together, how to get consensus. If you were a club president 
and you wanted to pr bring a project forward, you have to get consensus of the club to do that project. Our leadership program is uh, pretty much says non-authority type leadership. You're the president of a club, you have no authority. You were, you were asked to be president, but they didn't give you any authority to how to do it. So we teach you how to do that, how to r recognize people by what they do, uh, their personality styles, where they fit, uh, how, how good that they can, that they, some of them are doers and some of them are supporters. We teach you how to do that. We get you consensus, we teach you leadership skills, and then we take you into public speaking. Public speaking is uh, the extemporaneous speaking is how to, how to do an interview or how to present somebody or to uh, introduce them. Uh, then we go into a little three minute, five minute speech. And then we take you from that into planned public speaking. Now planned public speaking is to graduate out of that, you need a five and a 10 minute talk. The five minute talk, you're gonna talk about Rotary. The 10 minute talk is what are you passionate about? What in your life are you passionate about? And that's, that's the 10 minute. Then the last session is we take all of the, all of the facilitation, the leadership skills, the public speaking, <clears throat> and we round it out into business planning or, or business organization and project planning, where actually they take uh, and break the class up into groups and they, they plan for a project. And that's the success of where Pearls has come in because most of the clubs that are winning the prizes or have the great projects right now were 80% Master Pearls graduates and everybody on the committees were Master Pearl graduates. Those are the ones every year for the last seven that I know of, I've all won the, the uh, large club awards, medium club awards, mm -hmm. and small club awards. And that's pretty good. That is good. Um, I understand that the mission of uh, Pearls and the leadership organization and curriculum was based on trying to make clubs more effective, more effective as clubs based on leadership and organizational skills that those leaders would have. Have you noticed that to be yes, the case? Yes, uh, yeah, I've noticed that. In fact, uh, just about five or six years ago, we had a, uh, a president in our club that didn't have Master Pearls graduate, and she wanted to do a project. She just, it was her whole vision to do this for this year. She just couldn't get the consensus, and then she was, she was running up against a, 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 a project in the club that had been there for a long time and she wanted to add this to it. And they just didn't think that they had the wherewithal to do it. And, and if she had had the facilitation and the leadership skills to do that, we would have been fine. Mm -hmm. It sort of took the air out of, out of her year. Mm -hmm. But every club that you see that has leadership and Master Pearls graduates in it, they're at the top of the game and they don't have any trouble putting them on. They know how to pick people to get the job done. And that's what it's all about. Let's talk about the, uh, the five classes. You said there's five in the series of the master one. First one we talked about is facilitation skills. Let's go over that one. Tell me a little bit about what you do and the goal and mission of that class. The goal and mission of that class, as I explain it, is getting consensus of a group of people just like her in the club. We, we take them through, we say, here's what you got. You have a, like a Cadillac. It's, a, it's a, an old Cadillac, and we want to know what you want to do with it. Well, the group has got 15 different ideas on what they want to do with it, but they have to come to a consensus. And it shows them how to take, how to get consensus through working with some charts and things like that, where they have to talk about what they would do with the car and, and how they would do it. But at the end of the day, there's no doubt in anybody's mind that that's the project that you want to do, whichever one it is. Good. I've seen major projects come out of that class. Sure. We have one in our, uh, in our club uh, with Gerardo Sanchez who presented a program for veterans, a veterans stand-up day and things like that. And he, had, he was one, only one that did that. Well, now in our club, he's got 10, <laughs> 10 to 15 people that do that. That's good. So those are, those are some of the success stories. That's good. And um, since you and I are... Or, or and have had some political background. I would say in Rotary, they quote, say, quote, there's no politics. So uh, this would be one of the instrumental tools being able to bring that forward and making it less political, less contentious as far as. 
That's decisions. why I like no authority type leadership. Yeah, because yeah. if you explain that, uh, you, you sort of take the, the bully out of the pulpit, yeah. you know, and you back him off and therefore you're going to have business people in there, some are running major corporations, and you're going to have city folks in there, county folks, state folks, and they're all political. Mm -hmm. And so the, the political game has got to be got to be sort of set aside and that's why I really like Rotary leadership because every year our organization changes from top to bottom, changes every leader from top to bottom. That's from international, national, district, clubs, all the presidents, all, all of them are gone and you start off with a new group. And that's why uh, leadership training and you're involved with that, pets, president-elect training, governor-elect training, all of that is is just, that's. That's why we're so, so successful. <laughs> so the next group, next um, class we have is the um, leadership skills. Yeah, leadership skills <clears throat> start off by explaining what no authority type leadership is and give them the confidence that if they've never had a group leadership, we're going to teach them how to make, make their year successful. We teach them how to recognize people by who they are, what they do, how they speak. Uh, uh, are they, are they uh, organizers? Are they, are they just doers? Uh, or are they just uh, people that come to lunch? And by the end of the day, and we give them class projects to do in identifying these people, uh, who, are the, uh, who are the organizers and who are the, the suppliers, and they come out of that just pretty, pretty much satisfied. And in fact, the last class we had in Bakersfield, uh, the class came at the end and said, we think we ought to have more case studies. We really like getting in depth in that. Well, I used to teach personality styles, how to, how to recognize them by extrovert, introvert, you know, engineers, clerks, whatever. They're very, they're very recognizable. By the end of that day, they're ready to go on to, to, uh, to public speaking. The public speaking one, like I said, is extemporaneous speaking, short speeches, how to do that, not be afraid to do it, get up. Just let everybody know who you are and what's going on. The planned public speaking are the, are the major ones. So that's um, the third and fourth class in the series, Yeah, correct? third and fourth class in the series. And okay. then we, because we've done all of this uh, facilitation, leadership, and public speaking, now we're ready to go into uh, business management and project planning. And, and that to me is, is, the, is the ultimate pyramid. You build it. As, as the weeks went on, you build it. And you come down, and that's where we've had we've had some projects that have come out of those classes over the last 12, 14 years that people are still doing for fundraisers. You have Thousand Oaks with a chili cook-off. You have Cambria with a with a beer garden. You've got your project that you had in Carpinteria, the the, the park out there. Mm -hmm. uh, all of these are still in line. See me breakfast. I can I can name you. So that's the graduating class. That would yeah, be the that's fifth the graduating and final. class. That's the fifth and final one. Okay. Then we turn around and we give them a little pin okay. that says Master Pearls and pin it on them and they go back and I haven't seen anybody come out of Master Pearls yet that said they were sorry that they did <laughs> they, they did it. Very good. Yeah. Very, very true. When you look at uh, leaders within the district, when I say district, within the, the Rotary organization that we are, we are a member of, has it been the case that every governor, for example, has been a Master Pearls graduate? Pretty close. Yeah. Pretty close. I the last, oh, I'd say the last eight or ten, yeah. have been Master Pearls graduates, yeah. and that makes them successful. It, uh, you still have personalities involved even at that level and at every level. You know, they're all, they all have their way of, of leading. Mm -hmm. You know, personality. Uh, in in just the last four years, you've had four different types, and you're going to have another one True. Ne next year. True. Now, how about? Um, What's unique about, I would say, yourself and myself is that we were actually in Rotary before we went into politics, before we became councilmen, and uh, in your case, the mayor. How much do you think that prepared you, working with a volunteer organization like Rotary and preparing you for, to take on a position like that, an office? It taught me how to get along with people yeah. and how to, uh, to listen. And that, that, to me, is a big part of of, uh, of uh, leadership. I used to tell my, my crews in my divisions, you know, when I'd give a talk to them and I'd say, look at, you know, you're hearing me, but you're not listening to me. The art of listening is you've got to pay attention. Yeah. There's a whole class that I used to teach on just listening. But it, 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 all different types from all different walks of life in Rotary 
taught you how to get along with them, how to build consensus, how to do this. When I became mayor, I felt really comfortable. But holding a, holding a position like that is, is very humbling, you yeah. know, and you, yeah. you have to learn to be humble. If yeah. you're going to be the mayor, True. you're going to do that. True. I think that has part of, to do with uh, the non-authority leadership that Rotarians uh, have to tend yeah. to learn and understand because it's a volunteer organization. You know, yeah. you can't say you're fired. You, no. can't, you can't get rid Same of it. Same thing there. with mayor. Exactly. You volunteered to run for mayor because some of the groups said, well, we want you to run for mayor, your vision. There's the other thing of, of leadership that is so important to me is vision. If you don't have vision, you might as well pack it in. You know, uh, a, a city council person or a city mayor and a city council should be looking 20, 30 years out. As you have a city manager and you have a city management team that takes care of the todays and the tomorrows. So if you don't have vision, you're not going to go anywhere. And that's what I've liked about the, the, the district governors that I've worked for. They all had that vision. They all looking out there, uh, we're going to get prepared this, this year and then carry it on. Very, very, very big. Good. You know, I've uh, got a stack here. We got a few photos I'd like to go over with you. First of all, we'll take a look at these. The first picture um, shows, uh, I guess, one of the instructors, Doug Hoffman, I believe. Doug um, Hoffman teaches. Te teaching one of the classes. Our instructors, where, where do they come from and how do you evaluate and develop your, your instructing staff? Well, the instructors, uh, some of them come out and say, I'd like to be an instructor. I'm a professor here. Or I'm a leadership in the business here. And because we have five classes, that, uh, like you know, you've, you teach all five, and, and there's very few of them that teach all five, is that they're good at something, but they not be good at something else. Now, like Doug is, is one of the ones that teaches public speaking one and two, and he teaches five, which is business management and project planning. He wants to get into four and three. I mean, he, he used to teach facilitation, but he's not into it anymore. But uh, Professors, we have them. Mostly they just want to teach like public speaking or something like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Um, we have a few more pictures in a series here. One picture shows um, a class, looks like a class graduating photo. Right. Um, that is from which location? Santa Maria. Santa Maria, so part mm -hmm. of the north part of our district there. And, and I would say, wait, just be, don't mean to interrupt, but I would ahead, say that ahead. half of these people have been or are being going to be coming presidents. True. I can see him in here all over the place. Very true. Uh, next picture we have uh, shows a graduating class outside. Uh, I believe this is Thousand Oaks, correct? Yes, that's Thousand Oaks. Okay. Uh, that is taken at Cal Lutheran. Uh, we're using Cal Lutheran as, as one of our training centers. Uh, Doug Hoffman is a coordinator there. And this class, too, uh, there are some past presidents in there. There's a rotor actor, a few rotor actors in here. And uh, then you, you taught the class. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> that was. So um, overall, uh, curriculum-wise, what, what areas do we cover uh, as far as where we're teaching the classes? Oh, well, the, you know, the, the district runs from, from Cambria to Delano, uh, Delano down to China Lake, and China Lake to Thousand Oaks, and back up to Cambria. There's 74 clubs and about 4,000 Rotarians. And we split it up into four regions. The north region is San Luis Obispo County. The east region is uh, Kern County and China Lake and Tehachapi and all of that. And then Ventura County and Santa Barbara County. And those are the four regions. We held classes in San Luis Obispo, Santa Maria, Bakersfield, Taft, uh, Thousand Oaks, Cal Lutheran, Ventura, Santa Barbara Business College. Uh, so we, we, any place that we can get a, a room and, and lunch, we serve them lunch and breakfast. But uh, we cover them all. We have classes running every month and at least two classes every month spread out over the whole area. Great, great. Um, another picture we have here uh, shows uh, another class that looks like a graduating class in pretty diverse age group. You have yes, uh, it is. some, I would say, quote, veteran Rotarians and uh, looks like some high school students. This set, was this San Luis Obispo? This, this was actually Kern County. Yeah, that was Kern County. Yes, yeah, yeah I, I, see, I see Tiller in there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then the next picture we show um, looks like it's an all-high school class. This, this is an all-high school class in uh, an Interact Club. Newberry High School, Thousand Oaks High School, Simi Valley, St. Bonaventure, and Ventura. They were from all over. We held that in Thousand Oaks. 
at the uh, Best Western Hotel. And as you can see, quite a lot of turnout. We're getting a lot of requests from the Interact Clubs now for, for more leadership training. And you've only got two or three years to get them through it. True. That is very true. Um, as far as the number of, of those taking the classes, uh, pretty substantial in size? Pretty substantial. You see this one here when it was just all Interactors mm -hmm. because we, we took the next age group of rotor actors and moved them on, on up to the regular classes. Gotcha. There are, let's oh, say, 15 in this class, about, mm -hmm. and, uh, and you can see them. They're all look enthusiastic to me. <laughs> yeah, good, very good. We have two, two Interact uh, uh, brother and sister from one, one club and one family. The, the boy went through it first, and he held that over his sister <laughs> for about six months, and then she finished up. And it's the only one that I know of that are a brother and sister that have a Master Pearls. And one of them is a senior this year, and the other one's a sophomore. Great, great, outstanding. Uh, another picture here shows me, uh, I'll cover this one, with uh, Chris Mullen, who is actually from Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. And um, this was the transfer of some documents, some information from the Pearls curriculum. Right. How, how far is this curriculum? Does it reach worldwide? Uh, which yes, it does reach worldwide. There's, we have ours, which is Pearls. Uh, there, the uh, International has Rotary International training programs, leadership training programs, but it, it reaches worldwide. All of, these, all of these projects that are going on around the world have, have got some, some attachment to a basic, like Pearl's leadership class. Mm -hmm. In, in our club, we have two water projects going, one in Philippines and one in Cameroon. Both of those people have been through, or the, the, the core group has been through Pearls. And uh, our illiteracy program that we have, the uh, Trivia Night, that's put on by a Pearls graduate. Uh, the, the golf tournament that we hold, that's put on by Pearls graduates. That's a team of Pearls graduates. So it is pretty important to, to uh, all of our programs. That, somewhat involved, everybody that in Pearls is involved in one of the, one of the clubs or, or a project. Great, all right. A few other pictures here. Uh, this is uh, Royal Grande, their bandstand. Right. Um, that one I present because that was actually one of the projects that was developed through our curriculum class, That's right. correct? That's right, right. that's right. Yeah. And you have Cambria has got a project. Uh, I always thought it was interesting because I was in the class with them when they came up with it. You've always heard of uh, 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 wine, water to wine. Mm -hmm. and then they came up with a project, project that said wine to, wine to water. Mm -hmm. And it was a process that they were taking the old vineyards and, and converting what's, what was there uh, back to, to, to the water process, taking the alcohol out of it. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. crazy. <laughs> and then uh, the other picture, uh, next picture we show is actually the... Uh, Carp Maria, Carp Maria, Maria interpretive yeah. player. Yeah. Right. Again, that was one project that did come from also from uh, that graduating that class. Is, that's a beautiful, yeah, beautiful that, part. That was a good one. And uh, our last picture here shows a gentleman. This is uh, Bernard Ramos, who is a member of the water organization in Mexico. Right, right. And uh, again, I highlighted that because those projects, again, started and were implemented from a project development right. plan that we put in place by those classes. I think the thing that, that, that I, can, I can leave with you is I have, I have two projects going with me. I have Rotary and I have Caregivers. And they're both service, one's for the elderly, one's for the community. And we just have fun. This nothing's work. You know, it's just fun. We have a good time. And if you don't, you won't see them come back. <laughs> now, how about success stories? Tell us a little bit about some success stories, some, some of the, quote, testimonials you've heard, because oh, the, I've seen quite a few coming from in this curriculum. Yeah, they, people have, their business has, has gone. Uh, Savi Bim in, in, uh, in Simi Valley has a uh, embroidery store, and she says she went through the Master Pearls classes and graduated, and she says her, her, her business is up 30%. Wow. A lot of that's from people in Rotary that met her and wanted their businesses and shirts and jackets, and we still have Master Pearls jackets. Too. <laughs> <laughs> now, I do recall we had two um, faculty members, instructors, come actually from Carnegie program. That's right. To, to exactly right. 
to use and replicate some of the systems we're putting in place. We're putting in place and they, they're taking them and running with them. And we had John Dodson over in Taft doing that the same way with the youth uh, in, the, in the community college and some of the things he taught, the, especially the leadership portion of it. Uh, they, they'll pick up the, uh, the facilitation, that's no problem, but the leadership and the public speaking. Pretty, pretty important parts of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Now with uh, 3,400 Rotary Clubs around the world <laughs> in the 200 countries that we cover, how many do you think actually have uh, leadership training for their presidents Ooh. of this caliber? Would you tend well, to guess? I would say that it's, it's got to be over 50%, 60%. It's okay. got to be. They wouldn't be. We wouldn't be this successful if we didn't have as some type an of training. Organization, organization. Yeah, you take a look at us. We, we eradicated polio with good leaders years ago in the mid-'80s. We got rid of it. It came back. Now we're within that close of doing it again. Mm -hmm. If you didn't have the leadership skills to do it, push that, every club is involved with that. All throughout Rotary is involved with with eradicating polio. Mm. But this is what you need. You've got to have those type of leaders that least know the basic skills. That's very true. Um, as far as what you've seen, those successful, successful leaders in Rotary, how many of those do you think actually also carry the same amount of success within the community and professionally? Big. In fact, it, it, it grows more as you do more. You can take the Thousand Oaks Club. I can remember when they first started that, it was a little chili cook-off. Well, now it's a whole weekend for the whole city, and, and they're not, not making just a little bit of money. They're making grand money, scholarship money, uh, church money, not church money, but so much, but organizations like the schools and the, uh, community projects. It's just, it's huge. It's yeah, huge. Yeah, I agree. Um, from what I've seen with their successes, just to share with the audience there, they oh. actually funded a children's cancer clinic, um, actually built the hospital in Mexico. Pretty impressive. You yeah. go to the, you go up to the University of Utah, where my kids are from, and uh, you'll see the University of Utah Cancer uh, Hospital, and the Rotary did the, the children's wing of that hospital. Wow. Well, Jack, thank you very much for joining us and sharing some of your experiences with this. Uh, if somebody out there wanted to get more information, where would they go for this? Well, you can go uh, now. We are on the Rotary District District uh, website, so you would go Rotary District Five Two Four Zero, and it'll bring it up the web page, and you can see the schedule for the, all the Rotary classes for the next couple of months. And at the bottom of the page, you can just click on Pearls.org, and it'll take you into the, what the classes are. The, scheduling of them, the uh, signing up for them, registration, everything is there. And you don't need to be a Rotarian. No, you don't have to be a Rotarian. We have Rotary family that can come, uh, even business partners that you have and not, not in Rotary. Yeah, we're open to the, to the world. Well, thank you very much, everybody, for joining us. Uh, take a look at that, pearls.org, and see what you can do. Um, the tools that are taught in these classes are pretty exemplary and would definitely help you in your daily life also. So thank you, and we will see you soon.